Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and we're, today we're going to talk about this pesky thing that sometimes happens if you treat enough Invisalign or ortho patients, braces patients, eventually someone's going to complain and ask for a refund. And it can get very messy, confusing. I've had it happen to me before. Has it ever been justified? No, not in my opinion. But I mean, you certainly get insulted. Definitely. I mean, offended. You feel like you treated this patient super well. You feel like you had a great relationship. And you're thinking like, well, why didn't they just tell me they weren't happy as we went along? Why did they wait until everything was off, you know? So I kind of want to take you through that whole scenario and things that I've learned to do to help to prevent this from happening and then what to do if it did happen in the meantime. The first thing I do to prevent this from happening is I really like to loop the patients into the treatment plan, what to expect, where we are, what's next, what's the next stage, and always keep them on the up and up and even ask their both the if the patient is under 18, I ask the patient and parent for their opinions on certain things, especially things that could go either way that maybe have an aesthetic value. Remember, orthodontics is a science and an art. And the science part, it's my control, but the art part, they get some say in. And I want them to feel like they have some control. So that starts with, for example, showing the patient the ClinCheck, letting them have some say on the ClinCheck before I approve it, just in case they want to change something or try something different. Showing them various options Perhaps there's an option that's extraction. Perhaps there's a non-extraction. Perhaps there's an IPR option. Perhaps there's an uh, anterior only option. Lots of options, right? Show them all their options. Let them choose their option. Write the option that they chose down, you know? Write the options that they were given but didn't choose down. Start with the treatment plan. Have them sign that they chose this option. This is standard stuff that we do in an ortho office every single time, even if it's just a simple straightening case you know if there was an option for IPR put it down option was given patient declined you know um, oh there's always options I can always think of options and that's why you need if you don't fully understand how to create a treatment plan you definitely want to meet with you know an orthodontist at once at least once or twice to learn how we do it okay so again starts with the treatment plan from the treatment plan as you go so for example when, if I'm doing brackets and wires, there's a stage that I call Hollywooding stage, okay? That's the second half. And in that stage, I am going to bring the parents in. It's usually when I finish 18 night tie is about when I do that stage. When I finish the align and level portion of the treatment, and I'm moving on to the space closure or the detailing or the AP changes. That's There's a big shift, a pivot that happens in treatment. You should finish the one section before you move on to the other section. Remember, you don't move on to the other section, which has bigger wires, rectangular wires, until you finish the first section, which is in the round wires. And that's when you take that progress panel and you pull the patient in and be like, hey, you know, what do you feel about this tooth number 10 here? Do you think maybe it should come down a little bit? Would you like your laterals a little bit higher? How do you, how do you feel about that? Would you like a broader arch form or do you want a more narrow arch form? Lots of different things where they feel like they can have a little bit of control. How do you feel about how your front teeth procline? Do you feel like it's too toothy? Are you having any difficulty um, closing your lips over your, you know, your gums and your teeth? Or do you feel like it's easy? Are your mouth breathing? Things like that, right? Little things. So again, that's the first thing you, and then you bring them in at the detailing stage or, you know, in the middle and just ask those questions again. Finally, at the end, even if you think they're perfect and done, you need to ask the patient or parent if they think they're perfect or done. I know that seems a little counterintuitive and a lot of parents are going to look at you like you're nuts. Like, well, why are you asking me? I say, you know what? I want to make sure you're 100% happy with this outcome. I want you to be a raving fan. I don't want you to have any worries. As a matter of fact, I even want you to take a day or two and Bring your child's smile to your extended family and have them weigh in on it. What do they like? What do they not like? I want to know everything. Some of it may not be things that we can fix, like we can't fix the shape of a tooth with just braces or Invisalign. We can do a filling or a crown later. We can't fix the color of the tooth or the contour of the tooth, but we can move the teeth in and out, up and down. You know, a lot of things we can do, but I want to know all, everyone's opinions. Write them all down on a piece of paper and we're going to have a meeting before we de decide if we're taking these braces off or not. And we're gonna see if you want to address some of these. I can go over the risk and benefits, how much more time it would take. Because again, I want you to be 100% happy with the outcome and the patient, you know, if it's an adult, if it's a kid. That is probably the most important step you can take. 
I know you're thinking, yeah, it takes a little bit of a time. Oh no, the parents got to come in. If you start doing that and then you write it down on a piece of paper, we discussed this, we discussed that. Um, patients still elected to have um, the braces or their liners taken off and the parent, you write it on a piece of paper and the parent or the patient signs a piece of paper saying, I am satisfied with my outcome. I don't have any other changes I want. And I even have a standard form for that. It's available. It's called the um, Devon request form. There's another form if things didn't go well, but that's a whole different form. You always want them to sign this and you can custom make it if you have special things, special situations that went on. You want to make it as detailed as possible. Have them sign on that form. Once they sign on that form, there should never, ever, ever be an issue later because you got the form signed, okay? Um, everything else is, they cannot complain and ask for retreatments or refunds because they said they were satisfied. You get the idea, right? Okay, so those are the main things, but let's say you didn't do all this, okay? And you have a patient, you finished them, and they're just, they came back, they're not happy. Next question I'm gonna ask you is, are you, of course, are you taking initial and final records? When you're taking final records, they need to be taken on the day that the braces or the Invisalign comes off. That's super important. Do not let the patients push you around. Try to skip it, try to do it at a later time. You, you will regret this. It only takes one time and it'll blow up in your face, guaranteed. That is just part of the deal. I let patients know on the day of D-Bond, it is going to be a long appointment. This is what we have to do. We have to take your braces off, take your wires off, take your bands off. We have to fit you for retainers. We have to take final records. It will take, this appointment will take minimum 90 minutes, you know, or whatever, whatever you want to call it, you know. The final records are a requirement. Matter of fact, I don't even fit or deliver the retainers. They still stay in the cupboard. They stay in the closet until the final records are done. Because as soon as you deliver those final, those final retainers, you know what's going to happen? They're going to say, oh, I got to go, doctor. I'm going to hurry. Sorry, I have to be somewhere. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. Learn from my mistakes. I've had that happen to me so many times. Then it takes them forever to come back in because they already got their braces off. I didn't get my final records. And if they didn't wear those retainers perfectly, those teeth started to shift. Guess what? They come back. I got nothing. I don't have any proof that I finished the case because I didn't take the final records. And guess who's retreating for free now? Me. I'm going to be super duper mad. Okay. That's why you do it that way. So that's super, super important. Another thing you need to do at that appointment is take photos with the retainers on if it's a bonded retainer show that it's a really good intact bonded retainer in the photos take good photos not crappy photos take photos with the essex clear retainers on slightly open super important show that everything is well fitting and adapting because you don't know how many times patients will come back six months to a year later and say my retainers never fit it happens all the time that's another thing you can have them sign it you can have them sign something saying hey my retainers fit but you know you got to have the pictures if you have the pictures at that point, uh, hey, actually they did fit. I got pictures. They often forget you take the pictures with the name. And then as soon as you say I got pictures, they go, oh, never mind. So that's another important step. I know it's extra work, but you have to do it. Trust me, you will save a ton of money by doing this because it will inevitably, no matter how great a work you do, it'll blow up in your face at least once a month if you don't. Because there's always a bunch of jerks out there who are looking for refunds, you know, or looking to complain. Okay, lastly, Again, what, let's say you did none of that <laughs> and now you have someone wanting to refund or a retreatment. Best thing I can say if you didn't have all those records, the just the records showing that the retainers fit, the records showing that they accepted the D-bond, that they were happy with the result, everything signed, they're given options, if you don't have any of that, is yeah, you're probably doing a refund or retreatment. You really don't have a choice in that case. You're doing it. However you choose to work it out, that's where you call your liability insurance company. It's really important that you do this, you know, because if they, whether they're getting a partial refund or a retreatment, it's really, really important that you have the right document signed. I don't necessarily have this stock document because it should be custom made and your liability insurance company will have no problem having you talk to them. I know many dentists that have done this and they'll give you that document make sure that the patient signs that document so they can never sue you later they can never complain to a dental board later it's like peace of mind they when once they get what they want whether it's valid or not they can it will never hang over your head they can't say anything bad in public or in private they basically need to accept what they got and zip it you know so you really 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 want to you really want to do that or basically they're going to keep they can keep blackmailing you inevitably you know and i had something like that happen to me to be really honest 
it was a situation where I hadn't yet I hadn't yet delivered retainers and they were delayed. I mean, it was it wasn't even I did anything wrong, but I ended up making her and rushing her and an extra set of retainers early. And I did all these things out of my way, try to accommodate them. And then they were still upset. It wasn't done on time. So they wrote this nasty Yelp article and it was super long. And it was just scathing about what a terrible person I was, how I treated them badly because I didn't have the retainers on time. I went out of my way, you know, but you know, it's live and learn. I didn't get a lot of stuff signed. And you know, if I had had her sign some stuff, she could have never written that stuff on Yelp. And that stuff on Yelp haunted me and my ability to make a living for 10 years. And it definitely dinged me. That one stupid post. If I'd only done things differently, this would never happen. Okay. So anyways, that's what I want to tell you. I hope it was helpful. Don't worry. It will happen once, twice, three, 10 times in your life. You just want to be prepared. All right. Thanks.